Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor and a great pleasure for me to be here in this very interesting event to get further progress in our knowledge about the Bhutan's disease. As already mentioned, I have had the opportunity to organize a similar meeting in Vienna many years ago. Since then, many years have passed by, but our knowledge about the Bhutan's has not increased very much. We always hear impressive studies, new details, but I think we don't have a complex view of the whole problem. Uh, basically, if we look in the literature, we have two different views. We have the view of the fibromatosis, the Peter's disease is a fibromatosis, is a tumor-like affection. It starts with cellular proliferation in normal tissue and all the rest is consequence. The contrast view, which I want again to present you here, is that the disease starts with changes of the fibers, with a type of fibrosis, and the cellular reaction is within this uh, changed fibers. Now, um, we always talk about the onset of the disease, but we don't, I aware that we do not have the chance to study real early uh, changes of the Peter's disease. In our statistic, according to the patient's history, if a patient has a very initial sign of the Peter's disease, he has this already in average for 2.5 years. So it's not early, it's years old. And in reality, it's much older because the patient gets aware only after some time that he has something wrong in his palm. So when we see an early disease, it's several years old. Uh, what are informations we can get? Informations we can get from all the descriptions of doctors who observe their own disease, their own hand. And one of them was published in 1956 by Moorhead. And he described the soft swelling between metacarpal 4 and 5. He described some induration at the base of the ring finger. He described induration between thumb and index finger. And when he uh, extended the ring and little finger, there was some, uh, some wrinkles in the palm due to the fact that something has changed in the palm and then the disease developed further on. But in these early procedures, there is no nodule. There is not the luck nodule as the onset of the disease. The situation would be something like this. Uh, band between uh, thumb and index finger and uh, small changes, for instance, at the flexion crease of the PAP joint. No nodule. If we have the emerging of an ascending longitudinal fiber bundle into the dermis, and if this retracts, we have the typical dimple. And if we look at such a dimple, we have no nodule and no, no cellular proliferation at this point. Uh, in order to get some information about very early changes of the Peter's disease, I have done many years ago a cadaver study, and I had the opportunity to study 152 palmar penosis during a course of anatomy on the 
institution of anatomy of our university in Vienna. Uh, cases with manifested Peter's disease were excluded, so we studied palmar paralysis of hands which did not show manifest signs of the Peter's disease. And uh, we did observations under the operation microscope, and in these uh, observations, if we have a normal palmar paralysis, and you can see this with any uh, surgical opening of the palm in a normal hand, we have uh, tiny longitudinal fibers in the palm of paralysis, and these have a wavy course because they are relaxed. If you put on longitudinal tractions, the wavy course disappears, the fiber lengthens, and then it turns back to the wavy course. In some of these observations, we could see the loss of this wavy course. And in other uh, instances, there was, apart from the loss of the wavy course, a thickening of the fibers, and the fiber bundles tended to fuse to major bands. We also did, of course, histologic studies, and uh, we looked for cell proliferation. And this is such a typical uh, view through the operative microscope, and you see the tiny fiber bundles, you see the wavy cores, and this was so in 63% uh, of the specimens, but in and, uh, of this, uh, some were male and some were female, but in males uh, it was less uh, frequent, less frequently normal than in females. This is the other situation where these fibers have thickened, they have lost the wavy course and they tend to fuse. And this again was in 30% uh, of uh, the total a cohort of the 152, and again it was more common in males than in females. If we look at the distribution of the finger rays, we have a middle finger involved in 12, ring finger 34, little finger in 28, so it corresponds also roughly to the distribution of the Peter's disease. Cell proliferation was present in nine only and it was always located within thickened fiber bundles and not in normal tissue. We have also done studies with elastic fibers and here you see longitudinal bands thickened and in these fiber bundles there are no elastic fibers and these are the deep transverse uh, bands and they are not involved and they have elastic fibers. So elastic fibers certainly play a certain role. Now if we do mechanical studies, we can do uh, load strain studies. If we put the fiber bundle under a load, it extends, it uh, has a certain curve. And if we stop and if we deload, it returns but not in the same line because it's not an ideal elastic tissue, elastic body, but in another line. And this difference between the two lines is the expression of the viscous component. And uh, after the loading, uh, the line does not meet the point zero, but there is a very little um, remaining um, lengthening in normal tissue. And if we do this now with different uh, uh, tissues of hepatitis disease, we see that this residual strain increases very much. You have here always three experiments. Black is the diluting after an elongation of 2.5%. This is after 5% and green is after 10% strain. Now, this is a tissue of 
contract Japan of Tibetan's disease and you see this high amount of residual strain. This here is normal palmaponeurosis of patients not having Tibetan's disease and it is very little. And this is apparently normal palmaponeurosis of patients with Tibetan's disease, mainly from the second finger rate. You see, 2.5 and 5 percent load did not change very much, but after 10 percent loading, you have a residual strain which is significantly higher than uh, the normal. And this is in palmaponeurosis, which does not show any sign of disease yet, according to our possibilities of study those days. These are the thickened fiber bundles. They have, in all three instances, elevated values, and this are more advanced with uh, cell proliferation, and this show the very high uh, amount of uh, viscoelastic changes. Another point is the recovery time. If we do a stress strain experiment and we repeat it immediately after the loading, we have a different curve. We don't get the same curve because of internal arrangement within the fiber bundle. And uh, we have to wait for a certain time until we can reproduce the original stress strain curve. This is the recovery time. And here again you have the three different types, 2.5%, 5%, 10% elongation. And in normal patients without the pitra, in normal pyramidoporosis, uh, with the pitra, and in thickened fiber bundles, you have uh, some increase of the recovery time, but not very much. However, in proliferation cases and in contracture pain, you have an enormous amount of increase of recovery time, up to three hours, four hours, and uh, this means that the fiber bundle cannot recover and it will be again under stress uh, during a day's work or something like that. Now, another question is why uh, we have Tupidon's disease in uh, palm apneurosis and not in tendons, in spite of the fact that the palm apneurosis is an elongation of the primaris longus tendon and it looks in any aspect very much like tendon tissue. And the answer is that the tendon green here has a much stiffer stress strain curve. It is constructed to resist tension. And the pyramidoporosis has a much less stiff behavior. It is more constructed to be an elastic tissue. Uh, there was also mentioned today that um, we have the problem that tuberculosis disease occurs outside of the pyramidoporosis in the strict anatomical sense. But we have to have in mind that all the tissue on the palmar side of the hand, including the palmar digital fascia, the tissue over thena and hypothena eminence. All this is one unit. It is a functional unit. The function of this is to absorb pressure on the digit as well as on the palm and to store energy. So we should stop to think about different uh, tissues. This is one functional unit. And the modern concept of fascia supports this view very much now. Uh, why do we need an elastic property? We can explain this easily on the plantar aponeurosis. If you uh, stand on the floor with the full weight of your body, 
you extend the plantar ponorosis to widen the angle of the foot and you store energy and this helps you to lift the foot. This is the real function of the plantar ponorosis. And apparently a singular function uh, was present or is present in, for instance, baboons and I have had the opportunity to do some studies with the hand of baboons. You have here such a hand and you should note the much bigger fat uh, agglomeration about the phenomenons and the hyperphenomenons and at the basis of the fingers. So this fat uh, tissue is functional fat tissue. It helps the monkey to grip and to um, um, hold it on a tree or a branch or whatsoever. And if we then do the dissection, he also has a certain arm apparatus, but this is connected to all these uh, tissue components at the upper thing, at the thing, and at the fingers, and tracks it in center direction to help uh, uh, help you. If the monkey grips uh, a transverse bar, he would grip like we do with the fingers and the thumb in opposition. But very often, if you watch the uh, baboons, how they uh, behave, they will grip in a different way. Um, they will grip, excuse me, they will grip longitudinally with the middle finger along the bar and with thumb index finger on one side, little and ring finger on the other side with this fat and the plant, the panel process is tracking all this together and to help him to uh, get old. There is something wrong because the last slide would show how these monkeys grip a longitudinal bar and how they use index and uh, sound on one side and little and ring finger on the other side. So, in summary, we think that palm and plant apnosis are a spatial tissue. They are, have a spatial function as being elastic and help to walk and to grip and to get off this after this. And uh, this is based on elastic properties with a viscous component. But an increase of the viscous component may disturb the delicate equilibrium and trigger changes which finally lead to Turkey disease. Thank you.